During my last video, I made an easy team for Pokemon Yellow. This basically means that I created a team of Pokemon that are easy to catch, acquire and raise, and should also make your game experience feel easy as well. To prove that this team works, I have decided to upload this bonus battle in which I use that team to defeat the Elite Four. If you're up for that, then stick with me and stick with this video. Quick side note, I have allowed myself the use of potions in between fights. This doesn't mean that I can use heals or revives during a fight, just after a fight is done, I can patch my team up to be ready for the next fight. Also, I have decided to go with Primeape instead of Nidoqueen. And this is not necessarily because I think one is better than the other, on the contrary, Nidoqueen has great stats and a very wide move pool, but I just felt the Primeape vibe more. Right, so without further ado, let's jump right into Lorelei. The first Elite Four fight against Lorelei actually goes pretty well considering. I mean, I'm using level 40 Pokémon to fight level 50 to 60-ish Pokémon. My advice would also be to, if you're doing this for the first time, just train your Pokémon until level 50, because that gives you a lot more breathing room while you're doing these fights. But then again, Jolteon is not doing that bad and taking out a couple of strong contenders on Lorelei's team. It's all looking pretty well, but then we run into Jinx. Ice Punch. And an immediate freeze. There goes my fire counter against Jinx. So I send in Snorlax. But since Jinx is a lot faster than Snorlax, she decides to lock me into a slew of lovely kisses, basically putting me to sleep whenever I can deal any damage, and then finally finishing me off with a thrash, getting trolled by a Jinx. And against the final Pokémon on Lorelei's team, Primeape shows that he is a submission expert and takes it out. Next up, the true Gymshark before Gymshark was even Gymshark, Bruno. And truth be told, Bruno isn't much of a challenge. Starmie can take out any rock type he has with Surf and any fighting type he has with Psychic. And while this is of course precisely the reason why Starmie is on this team, it still makes Bruno the easiest out of all four. Agatha, apart from having some creepy music, also has some creepy tactics. For example, here she uses the infamous Confuse Ray Mega Drain combo. Another one of Agatha's unnerving tactics involves repeatedly spamming super potions on a level 60 Gengar. Why she doesn't use full restores is beyond me, but uh, she's trying to stall me out regardless with super potions.
Next up, Lance. During this fight, Snorlax is an absolute beast. Not only does it tank two consecutive Hyper Beams from two much higher level Dragonairs, it also takes them both out, which <laughs> kind of made me laugh the first time it happened. Another close contender for the MVP award during this fight is Jolteon. It takes out Aerodactyl, it has already dealt with Gyarados at the start of the fight, and it thunder waves the level 62 Dragonite at the end of the fight, which enables Starmie to sweep it with an Ice Beam. And now for the final fight, the confrontation we've all been waiting for, the duel with D-Bag. And that confrontation is really a trade back and forth between two rivals. On the one hand you have Venusaur taking out Sandslash, but then Alakazam crits Jolteon and takes it out, and Snorlax comes in and lays in those big physical hits to take out Alakazam again. It's really a fight between two very competitive trainers. Ninetales picks up a KO on Exeggutor. Starmie picks up a KO on D-Bag's Ninetales. But then Magneton, on his part, absolutely short circuits Primeape. So I decide to go for the oldest trick in the book. It's time to use the Toxic Leech Seed combo on Venusaur. And as you might notice, that combo is slightly bugged in Generation 1. But then D-Bag busts out his starter. You know, the one he stole from me back at Professor Oak's lab? Well, Vaporeon obliterates my Venusaur and proceeds to do the same against Ninetales as I try to go for a Desperation Confuse Ray. But then Snorlax busts out a Body Slam, paralyzing a 24 level higher Vaporeon and opening up the possibility to lay in two double edges. Which seal the deal, win him the match, and land him and his teammates into the Hall of Fame. I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this bonus battle. Um, I hope for some that this gave some insight in how to build an easy and functional team. Of course, this is not foolproof, and there are many additions to make, many adjustments to think of. Everyone plays this game a different way, so this is just an example of many. If you enjoy this kind of content, then 
please join me again next time when I have my sights set on building an easy team for Pokemon Blue. And for now, I hope you enjoy your day, and I hope you enjoy the Hall of Fame end credits. <laughs>